You're listening to the Real Estate Runway Podcast, powered by Quattro Capital, where we are all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, the recovering engineer turned multifamily investor, Chad Sutton. All right, everyone. Today, we're going to have an interesting flavor of alternative investing on the show today. One is franchise investing. So Miss Kim Daly is going to come on the show with The Daily Coach, and she's going to talk a little bit about what she does as a franchise consultant. Now, it's interesting. Her services are entirely free. The franchisors pay her to help place people you know, into the right businesses for them. It's incredible in that this is just like when we buy real estate and we go add value to it and increase its value over time. You know, there's a market for these. They generate cash flow. They have a not not quite a hard asset, but a business behind them, right? And it's a proven set of systems that you can take and replicate and create something for your wealth generation and future rather than starting with a new widget and a business on the front end. So without further ado, let's get right into the show. But before we do, if you get any value out of this out of this episode, please like, subscribe. We really appreciate that five star review and a thoughtful comment. That is really the only way to grow the show, and we we thank all of you who do that every single time that we release an episode. And if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, check us out LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram at Team Quattro Capital, one word, no special characters or visit us at thequattroway.com. And if you want to apply to be on the show, visit us at thequattroway.com slash podcast. And now on to your scheduled production. All right, all right, all right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Sutton, and we are joined today with Miss Kim Daly, franchise expert, business coach, and motivational speaker, founder of The Daily Coach. And I'm going to say it the way she wanted me to say it. The Daily Coach. No, I'm just kidding, Kim. I got to, I got to, had to do it. Had to do it. How are you, Kim? <laughs> I am great, Chad. I'm excited to be your special guest today. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited to have you here. Well, you know, everyone just heard me on the intro talking about all this franchise business we're going to talk about today. But before we get into that, tell us who you are. Tell us, you know, a little bit about what excites you and, and how did you find your way into franchises? Right. That's such a good question. Nobody wakes up and goes, oh, yeah, I want to be a franchisee. We all sort of like we always say like franchising finds us through some like life event or looking, you know, some fork in the road. Uh, and that's totally my case. I was actually on my way to medical school. I answered a classified ad, which might give away my age, but I answered a classified ad in the newspaper for a franchise consulting company, not the one I'm a part of today. It was for a, a summer part-time job. I They offered me a full-time job. Of course, I took it. And of course, my father was like, don't do that. You'll never go to med school. And of course, I was like, dad, you're so wrong. And he was so right. I never went. <laughs> But I found a, an industry of people helping people, of everyday people waking up and living their dreams, just entrepreneurialism at its best, people owning and controlling their life. And one thing I learned about myself, Chad, from working in that job from like the very first day was I did not like being employed by somebody else and feeling like I had to like be in an office. I'm like a super active person. I like to move around and like you know, break up my day. I'm highly effective, but like, I want to work when I want to work and like leave the office when I, and so oh, working yeah. for somebody else did not work for me. By the age of 25, I left, I started my own company at 29. I turned back to franchising because I realized entrepreneurship, super lonely, needed systems, needed processes, wanted people, wanted to build something that was bigger than Kim. And here I am over 20 years later, who knew that this would be the greatest journey ever for me? Who knew that you would find passion in the franchise world? That is, you know, and I have to say, it, it's not it's not like you, you just mentioned or no one wakes up and says, I don't think I want to go into franchising. Well, this is a little more exciting. I, the last episode we did, I literally had a guy who was a public adjuster and we had the same conversation. Nobody wakes up, th nobody really wakes up thinking they want to be a public adjuster in the insurance field. This is actually pretty cool. I mean, I can name 150 different awesome franchises out there. So <laughs> had to correct you there, but. You know, this is it's fantastic. You found your way into there, and and just curious, if you went into medical school, what was your uh, what was your intended direction? What inspired you about that? Yep. So I love that question. So I'm a nutritional biochemist by degree with a uh -huh. minor in sports nutrition. I worked as a personal trainer during college, 
my goal was to go to med school and work with professional athletes. So every in my private life, Chad, people know me more for like my nutrition advice. I'm a homeopathic, naturopathic girl, you know, love like just nutrition and how nutrition fuels the body, feeds the body, heals the body. And I'm also passionately dedicated to the workout. <laughs> so we're definitely talking fitness. If you know Kim Bailey personally, if you tell me you go to the gym, we're off on a tangent and we may never come back. Hey, I've got a Peloton right behind me uh, off screen here. So I feel you, you know, that fitness, fitness is, uh, is energy and food is medicine, you know? So it's a very important part of life. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we here at Real Estate Runway are real estate investors. So I'm going to say, you know, hashtag simple minded people. Can we kind of go into first, what is a franchise? You know, we, we talk a lot about alternative investing on the show and, you know, how we buy things and add value to them. And, you know, sure, we talk about real estate. It's just a business. What is a franchise? Let's start with that, if you don't mind. I love that you say you buy things, you buy things and add value. So what you're doing in a franchise chat is you're buying a business plan and adding value. So you're buying down the learning curve of starting a business by partnering yourself with people who sort of already figured it out to this point in its history. Now, the thing about a franchise is that a business is a living, breathing, dynamic thing, right? It's ever changing and ever growing if it's going to be successful. So when you're looking at a franchise, you're looking at it at one moment in time. And most of the time, we're sort of looking back, right? We're looking at where they've come from to get to this point, but yet we're investing for where it's going. So ultimately, when you're looking at a franchise investment, you're really looking at people. Like I said, in my own journey, entrepreneurialism is super lonely. You don't have anybody to like turn to when you're like, ah, how do I figure this out? Or what do I do now? Oh, shoot. You know, in a franchise, it's so collaborative. You have not only a corporate office of people whose brand it is and who idea it is to sort of, you know, serve a customer in a with a t particular product or service, but you have your family of franchisees all over the country who all share the same brand. You're all shareholders in the same brand. They wear the same shirt as you. They live the same struggles as you. And you have them to bounce ideas off of. I always, I love to say that like in franchising, you go to training at a corporate office and you sort of learn the fundamentals of your business. And then you're going to spend the rest of your life as a business owner perfecting the art of that business. And you're going to use your fellow franchisees who are a little bit ahead of you, maybe a little bit smarter than you, maybe a little bit more successful than you to kind of pull golden nuggets from to help you keep growing and growing and growing and becoming better at what you do. That's fantastic. So really it's entrepreneurship with a team, if I could even venture it that way. Sure. You're not really, you're not really starting from the ground up, right? You're not building Correct. the brand. And so maybe that leads into the next question. You know, I think a lot of people look at entrepreneurship and owning a business as, okay, I've, I've made a widget or I've got a service or I'm going to do something. And I'm, I got to go like start from ground zero and build right. that company, find the systems, figure out what does the brand look like, set up an email domain, like all that kind of stuff that goes into early, early days. Whereas when you're buying into a franchise, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of starting with an existing model and systems, right? So what exactly, Kim, is the value proposition of a franchise as an investment? Yeah, you kind of just said it. So the whole idea that if you're if you're an entrepreneur, like you just said, you have an idea, but you've got to flush this idea out. So you've got a trial and error, like exactly who is the customer and how do we find that customer? What's the messaging? Where do we spend those advertising dollars? Where do we place the store? How do we negotiate that lease? How do we find or source those products that we're going to need to put in our store or to put in our business? So there's all of this trial and error not to mention like creating technology apps and databases to manage all of your KPIs in your business. So an entrepreneur has an idea and then has to stop and create all of that. And ultimately, that's why 90% of startup businesses fail. People run out of money and probably run out of patience trying to figure <laughs> out how to be successful. But in a franchise, that statistic isn't owned in franchising because every franchise that you would explore will have its own success and or failure rate that they will disclose to you in a legal document that's required by the government. But in this franchise, all of that's been figured out. Somebody's already spent the money and the time, sometimes years, flushing out the idea, figuring out the customer avatar, figuring out the marketing, where to spend the money, how much money, 
How many customers am I going to need to build a positively cash flowing business? How do we handle customer objections? How do we keep customers? How do we source the best managers? How do we find the right employees, right? How do we source the trucks we're going to need or the product that we're going to need and get national buying power? real estate and site selection and working with landlords. So a good, solid franchisor has the answers to all of those questions and so many more. So you pay a franchise fee, which is a one-time fee. Kim Daly calls that the cost of entry into Disneyland. It opens the gate and it buys you instant access to all these ready-made tools so that you can get trained and you can move toward making money rather than that entrepreneur who doesn't have a franchise fee, but also doesn't have any of those tools, who has to sit and figure that out, sometimes for years, and then never even get to the point where they can make money. That's that's incredible. And so like, there's so many different kinds of franchises out there, Kim. I mean, I, I can think of a few hot names today. I mean, you've got Chick-fil-A, who's like what, America's favorite chicken nowadays, I think. You've got you know, anytime fitness. I mean, all the, all sorts of different, I'm assuming those are franchises, by the way. Yeah. And, you know, how do you go about even selecting the right type of industry, franchise model, things like that for your background, interest, skills, goals, you know, like there's so many out there. Where do you start? It's such a great question. So this is exactly what the daily coach does for people. All right. so I am a franchise consultant, Chad, for over 20 years. I have been helping people figure out based on their background, interests, skills, finances, and goals, what would be the right types of businesses. But as I've mentioned, franchising is about a partnership. So it's not just about finding a widget, right? I don't need you to be a widget expert to be a successful franchise owner. I need you to have basic business skills, like whether it's business development or management or operational skills, whatever the particular business that you're investing in sort of requires from the owner. But you do not need previous experience in the industry to own said business, right? Oftentimes you can hire to the experience of the business and you, the owner, should be working on the business while your team works in the business. So selecting the right business is not so much about like, oh, Kim loves to work out. She should own a gym. It's more about finding a business that is a vehicle that can drive my life personally, professionally, and financially to some new place. So when people come to me and they're thinking, I want to diversify from my real estate portfolio or Kim, I'm, I'm worried about losing my W-2 job or, hey, I've already lost my W-2 job and I'm not going back, right? So I need to replace that income. I want to be in control. I want to build a business. I'm working with individuals and couples every day to help them get organized in their thinking about what are you trying to create in your life? Pre mm -hmm. Paint a picture of your future, three years, five years, 10 years. And how does this business play a role in getting you from here to there? And then once we've clearly sort of identified where they want to go, the scale to which they want to build a business, the the journey that they want to go on, the role that they want to play, the time commitment they want to put in, then I have the relationships with the right franchisors, the best of the best franchisors. Because not all franchisors are created equal. Not all of them are worth your time and your money. But I have some really good friends. I've been doing this for 20 years, like I said. So these franchisors, like, are they're my colleagues. And they pay me to actually do this. It's a free service for my candidates because I'm paid like a recruiter because I'm doing really all the dirty work for them. You know what I mean? I'm pre-qualifying people. I'm matching what people are trying to get out of a business to their, you know, key skills and territories, like where they, they're looking to grow their business yeah. with, with where somebody lives. So I'm doing all of that upfront work for them. So by the time that the two get together, it's a much more meaningful conversation from go. That's pretty incredible. And so really, I mean, there's no risk to the potential franchisee to reaching out because the franchisors are really, that's, they're compensating you for helping them find good franchisees. Correct. That's, inc that's it's incredible. all for free. Yep. Yep. And I always tell people, so we don't, you know, people like, you know, like, look, you don't have to take my advice. It's free. You know, like <laughs> I'm not here to like push anybody into franchising or tell you this is absolutely the right thing for you. I'm passionate about what I do because I love inspiring dreamers. I love helping yeah. people understand what the truth of franchising is. 
But then whether they make it right for them or wrong for them is 100% on them. I'm just here to guide that process so they know they're asking the right questions, talking to the right people. How do you like make sense of this franchise disclosure document, that legal document? How do you finance a franchise investment? I have the greatest friends in franchise lending and they can get you pre-qualified. So my process is very succinct. It takes one to two months to complete. So you hmm. don't have to spend six months trying to figure out if this is the right thing for you. I always tell my people, you're going to figure out if this is a no, you're probably going to figure that out in the first one to two weeks of working with me just because my process is so front loaded because I've been doing this for 20 years. I know exactly where people are going to fall out. So we're going to get to those elephants in the room <laughs> early, money and time, right? And once yes. we get past that, it's only really fear. So then that's a matter of me coaching you through it and then you pushing through it. But sometimes the fear is too much and people can't do it. But no problem. We're going to make friends. We're going to have some fun. You're going to learn a lot. And if you go away and say franchising is not for me for now, maybe you'll come back in the future or maybe you'll just check that off your bucket list and go, I thought about it once, but it's just not for me. And all of those outcomes are totally fine in my life. Well, you know, and you hit one of the things right there here in the front is the concept of being an owner, not an operator, right? And I think that's that's probably somewhere a lot of people get hung up as well. How do I choose a business that I want to work in? I don't really like frying chicken, but I do like working out. You know, you're thinking about it wrong if you're going that direction because you don't want to be the one in the business doing it. You want to be the one working on the business, growing the business, increasing the revenue, you know, hiring to the needs of the company that so that, that cool. it sounds like a little tidbit that Kim would help coach you through if you had that mindset. Totally. In, so. You got it, Chad. Yeah. And I love like, you know, getting inside like the psychology of, you know, like so like if if, if it was somebody was interviewing me, yes, I do love the gym. But what I really love is a life giving environment. I yeah. love being you know, where people are bettering themselves, right? I don't want to work. I don't, I don't have anything against CBD or, but I don't want to do that. Like, that's just not who I am as a person. If someone says, Kim, you know, we have kids and we're very family oriented. Awesome. Like, you know, putting them in an environment in a franchise business like that offers maybe tutoring for kids or soccer programming for kids, or we have a franchise that brings physical education into private schools that oftentimes it gets cut from the budget. So there's all these different types of franchises that are not the Chick-fil-A's or the Anytime Fitnesses that we know of as big consumers, but they're really solid businesses. They're a lot of times they're B2B, like your customer is an institution, like a school, mm. right? As a consumer, we, we wouldn't even know that that's a franchise. But when you work with me, I get the benefit of like showing you some of those things. And some of those, sometimes those businesses come with smaller cost of entry and more financial potential, better quality of life. Maybe it's a more Monday through Friday. You don't have a seven day a week business, right? So all of these characteristics come into play as I get to know people. And again, they share with me a vision of what they're trying to create or build in their life. Hmm. And then I can provide the options and we can sift and sort and see, does one feel like the right option for you? That's really awesome, Kim. That, that service is incredible because I think helping people figure out what they're trying to build in life first is also a key to, oh, what what of the million businesses out there might I want to be into? You know, that's just an incredible I don't know service. how you do it otherwise. It's like shooting, it's like shooting a, you know, a dart or finding a needle in a haystack because there's like three to 4,000 businesses yeah. operating as franchises at any one time. And like I said, they're, that doesn't mean they're all even equal. Right. Yeah. Some of them have horrible track records, lots of failure, you know, like this. So knowing like having someone like me that has 20 years of relationships that you're leveraging, you know, people like place people into these businesses. I know that you're if you perform, you're going to be happy. You know, you're yeah. at least per my other people. I don't want to make any claim that, you know, anybody can is guaranteed any amount of happiness or success. It's all on you. But um, at least I have that, you know, going in, I can give you comfort. Like these are really good people and well-respected in the industry. That's wonderful. So let, let's, let's take another step back here for a second, Kim. And let, let's address the elephant in the room, right? We're all experiencing a little bit of an interesting time in the economy, right? Things are not quite as, as boomy as they were a year ago. There's a lot of negative press out there. You can choose in your mindset what you listen to. That's, that's fair, but it's out there, right? So- right. Let's talk a little bit about how franchises fare in the good times versus the bad times. Are all things equal? Are they susceptible to failure? You know, let's kind of go that road a little bit and see how safe of an investment these really are. Okay, another really good question, Chad. So 
here's what I'm going to say about that. If if a recession is on your mind today, you know, again, you have to sort of look up from the moment that you in, were in. Are you investing for the moment? Or are you investing for the future? Because here's the thing. If you're a business owner for 10 years, the economy's got to be able to do what it's going to do. If you're getting in at a recession, then we're going to come out of it. You're going to be that much stronger, right? But if it's super on your mind and that mentality doesn't work for you, there are also franchises in essential services, right? If I get a leak in my roof because of snow, I don't want to call you, but I have to call you, right? If my drain is clogged, I'm not fixing the hair. I'm not cleaning the hair out of my drain, Chad. I'm calling somebody <laughs> to fix my drain. So there are franchise businesses that just have that essential quality to it. But oftentimes they're not the fun businesses, right? So yeah. if you're an investor and you're like, yeah, but I want to do something a little more fun and can I do it safely? And if there is a recession, there's also sort of, there's a buffer in a lot of the demographics. So some of the businesses, when I talk about, you know, selling people what they want versus selling people what they need, well, who's to define whether my gym membership is a want or a need, except for me? Who's Fair. to define whether the manicure that I have every two weeks is a want or a need? Looks great, for by me, the way. Looks right? great. <laughs> right? So when you think about, like, we come from our own perspective, and sometimes people negate options that if they just would stay open, I'm not saying you have to invest in it, but I'm like, if you come to me for help, just go with the process and have some fun and be willing to go to the franchisor and say, well, show me your past results from 2008, 2009 and why this thing fares. Like beauty brands are so resilient. It's hilarious. Like the pandemic knows, the beauty industry knows nothing on a pandemic, right? Except when we had the shutdown and we weren't able to color our hair or do our nails or put our eyelashes on or have a facial. But once we could get back to doing those things, those franchisors saw like year over year record like their numbers were higher in July and August of 2020 and 20 going into 2021 than they were in 2019 because of the pent up demand. But like, that's not, I have so many videos on my YouTube channel about that, by the way, because I went on a mission to find, I'm all about the good news. I'm a good Christian girl. I'm all about, I'm going to find good news in franchising. And so in 2020, I went looking for those franchisors who had these stories that just sort of Find the logic. And so you can find those stories on my YouTube channel, but also just come to me and just stay open because there, there is fun to be had selling people what they want, even in a down economy. Because the thing is, what I was going to say is there's, there's a demographic where, yeah, I don't really want to absorb the extra dollar every, on everything in the grocery store, but I can absorb it. And it's not going to take away from me going to the gym. If going to the gym is how I define my healthy lifestyle, right? Or right. buying organic food or putting Botox in my face or whatever it is that we girls do, right? If that's what I define as a priority for me and I'm in a certain demographic, those franchisors can show you data or they don't. And if they don't have the data, it's not the right thing. But a lot of times they have that data, Chad, that helps people go, I never would have thought. You know, another thing is children's services. So. Am I going to stop spending money on my kids' extracurricular sports? No way, man. These are my kids, right? Yeah. I'll give up something on my own to keep paying if in hard times, right? So there's these industries that are out there that while they're not essential like plumbing or HVAC, <laughs> they still have this quality of you can make a case and franchisors can show you how they're very resilient even in an uncertain or difficult economy. Super interesting. And so it really sounds like folks, the data is there. Reach out to Kim and she can really help you figure out what is the best path for you? What what gets you excited? And, you know, it sounds like she just busted some myths that I knew. I, I thought I knew that, you know, things like a haircut place was was not recession proof. Well, uh, you know, to be fair, in 2008, I didn't see a whole lot of people walking around with long hair. So it, it must have been, uh, must not be the case. So well, Kim, I'd love to keep you going on this all day because this is so interesting, but I got to ask you four questions before you get out of here. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Question number one, what is your superpower, Kim, in life or business and how does it yep. benefit you? My superpower 100% is my positive mindset. I am the biggest goal setter that I know. <laughs> 
I am not afraid to scare myself with the biggest dreams. I've always been that way my entire life. I've made history in my industry and in my business. The only, I really say this, there's nothing special about Kim Daly except that superpower of I dare to set really big goals and believe in myself. That is incredible. And, and I don't know how to top that. So well, let's, uh, goal setting is, is freaking amazing. So <laughs> let's go the other direction though. Give me a little bit of dirt. What's your biggest failure, life or business, your choice? And uh, what'd you learn from it? This is a tough one for me because I always look at like when things go again, because of my positive mindset, I always kind of look at it as like, what can I learn from this? So I don't really carry too many regrets in my life. Even like Chad, I'll just say this like, so I love to ski. Yeah. I made a stupid mistake on a, you know, pretty messy ski day and broke my leg, which my kids are like totally mortified. Like you broke your leg. Like, and I wasn't even on like a difficult part of the mountain. It just shows you like, you know, if you do the wrong thing, no matter how experienced you are, you can break your leg. Yeah. And, but even that, like I... I learned more about myself from 14 weeks of having to rely on other people. I'm a highly self-reliant person. I will not ask for help. <laughs> and so having to, I had to have a caregiver come in my home to bathe oh my me, gosh. to do my lawn, to do our laundry, to, you know, grocery shop and iron my kids, you know, private school uniforms. Like I had to ask for help and be humble to be like, I can't do it. And so even like, I would look at like, I made a stupid mistake that cost me a broken leg and 14 weeks on crutches, but gosh, I learned more about myself and my character and really took it as a time. I learned how to meditate during those 14 yeah. weeks because my kids were out skiing every weekend and I was home alone. I'm like, what the heck am I going to do? I took up a meditation course and literally changed my life. So wow. that's a tough one. I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but I just don't define things that go wrong as failure. I look at it like, well, how can I get better? How can I do this better the next time? You know, you're, you're probably part of the 1% club here on Real Estate Runway who have managed to take that question and turn it into something how they bettered themselves. So that's really awesome. And uh, I'm actually grabbing my leg because I'm going to be in Park City skiing in a couple of weeks. And now I'm like, oh, I hope I don't do that. So if you jinx when me, you're I'm coming tired, for you. quit. That's the yeah. advice I have to think. Don't go for one more run. It's, it's always, always the last the run, isn't it? It's always the last one. I did. I, I heard an ankle that way. <laughs> All right. Question number three. So this it's free content time. Tell me about your YouTube channel and how your consultations work. Okay. So, yep. My, first of all, my services are entirely free. So anybody who's just inspired to like, want to know more about franchising, explore opportunities. Maybe you've thought about a business, you just have questions, absolutely reach out to me and I'll take you through my process for free. You never pay me any money. But also my YouTube channel is such a great place to begin during 2020 when I couldn't travel. That's what I used to do before 2020. Look, 2020 was adapt or die. If you were a business owner, right? Like, Pretty much. So I, I look at it as the greatest adaptation for Kim Daly because I used to travel and host live events. Now, Chad, I no longer have to get on an airplane, leave my kids and my family. I sit here in my studio and make videos like it's hilarious to me. And, and talk to people when I'm sleeping, which is like my dream. Yes, yes. <laughs> so go to my YouTube channel, Kim Daly, D-A-L-Y dot TV. I have all kinds of videos, over 500 videos on all parts of the process, franchising, understanding it, funding, talking to franchisors, validating with franchisees, like so much content and growing every week. We put out new videos every week. So don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> and ring the bell. Incredible folks. And whatever you're listening to this on, scroll right on down to those show notes. And that link will be right there for you. Just click it. You can go like, subscribe and watch to your heart's content. Reach out to Kim. All right. I love it. And last one, Kim, question number four. One of Quattro's four pillars is philanthropy about taking care of people. Starts with people and ends with people. Tell us a little bit about where your heart is, where you put your money. And you'd be surprised. A lot of times we get reports of people like randomly donating alongside of our, our guests in their chosen uh, area of philanthropic venture. So where would yours be? I love that, Chad. So I'm a huge fan of Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm part of the EFAM. I've been following Pastor Furtick for four or five years. I try to tithe 10, more than 10% of my income 
I actually belong. I told you at the beginning of the show, I'm a practicing Catholic. My children go to Catholic school and we're very, you know, involved members of our Catholic church, which is so funny that I'm then into this non-denominational <laughs> church. But as I told you, I believe that Stephen Furtick is the greatest Bible storyteller of our time. If you want to learn how to live your faith in your day-to-day -day life, I have found him to be the greatest resource. So I love to abundantly bless Pastor Furtick. And you know what? I'll tell you this little fun tidbit. So I turned a big 5-0 on May 5th no way. Of, 20, of 2020. Y'all, if you're on YouTube, how is this woman 5-0? No way. That's I don't believe that. I mean, it's so mad. <laughs> It's on that good, heavy living, healthy living chat. So listen to this. So Pastor Furtick does Elevation Nights where he travels. So he was in Boston at the Garden on May 5th. If there was ever a blessing from God, like the greatest gift you could give to Kim Daly, of course, I was in the front row. <laughs> and because I'm a big donor, the online pastor, Chad, came out from behind stage and physically got to meet me and bless me with like pictures and like I feel like they're celebrities because I watch them on YouTube every week that's awesome I was just I sucked up that was the best birthday present God could have ever given me what are the chances he would be in Boston my hometown on my the night of my 50th birthday come on Amazing. That, that was a happy birthday, Kim, right there. Straight from God, straight to your enjoyment. That is fantastic. It was. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kim, wow, we have almost used all of our time. Thank you for staying longer with me here than we usually do. I can't wait to have you on the show again. I think this is a fantastic topic. We don't talk about enough. So I really hope you'll it, you know entertain coming back on the show here in a couple of weeks. And thank you so much for coming and sharing your services, sharing your knowledge. Folks, if you want to reach out to Kim, again, scroll right on down to the show notes. All of her information will be there. Kim, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. All right, everyone. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. Until next time, over and out. All right, everyone. That was a pretty amazing episode. I cannot believe that woman is 50 years old. She looks 40 at best. But... If you are interested in franchise investing, reach out to Kim. She has a, a fantastic program, been doing this a long time. And as mentioned, her services are free. So you really have nothing to lose if it's something you think can help you build wealth and cash flow for your future. As a reminder, if you got any value out of this show, please scroll down on your podcast app and give us a five-star review and a little comment saying how much you enjoyed the show. We really appreciate when you do those. We read every single one of them too. And if you want to apply to be on the show here in the future, visit us at thequattroway.com slash podcast. As always, follow us on social media via our parent company, Quattro Capital, at Team Quattro Capital, all one word, no special characters, or by visiting us at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast, over and out. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway Podcast.